This video is going to show you different ways that you can summarize categorical data. Now, if you recall from last class, a categorical variable is a variable where the possible responses are categories. Gender is probably the most commonly used categorical variable because you can break down the population into two distinct categories, male and female. Let's take a look at the scenario we're going to be working with throughout this video. We take a survey of 120 college students, and we ask each of them if they wear glasses, if they wear contacts, or if they wear neither. Out of the 120 people, 48 of them responded that they wear contacts, 30 responded that they wear glasses, and 42 responded that they wear neither. Our ultimate goal here is to summarize this data. However, the reality is that there are several different ways that we can accomplish this. We can do this numerically through a number of different ways, and we can also represent the data graphically. So to summarize data numerically, we can do it a couple of different ways. One way is using the count or the frequency, which is very simply just the number of observations in a category. The way that we summarize this succinctly so that it's nice to look at is by using a frequency distribution. And a frequency distribution is nothing more than a table of the counts for each category in a categorical variable. Like you see down below, we have a column for eyewear and we have a column for the count. If you recall, 48 people said that they wear contacts, 30 people said they wear glasses, and 42 of them said that they wear neither. Altogether, this adds up to our 120. So a frequency distribution is quite literally just putting the overall counts for each category into a table. Now, there are also two other measures that we can use to describe categorical data. They're very similar to the count. They're related to the count or the frequency. But we need to do a little more work to get there. One of them is the proportion. The proportion is the count in each category divided by the total number of observations for the variable that we're looking at. So in this case, we had 48 people who wore contacts. We have 120 people overall in the survey, meaning that our proportion for contacts is going to be 48 divided by 120, which gives you 0.4. We can do the same thing for glasses. We have 30 people who wear glasses, 120 people overall in the survey. 30 divided by 120 gives you 0.25. And for our final category, people who wear neither, 42 is our count, 120 is our total sample size, so our proportion is 42 divided by 120, which gives you 0.35. Notice that your proportions all have to add up to 1. The other measure that we can use is the percentage, and the percentage is derived by taking the proportion as a decimal and multiplying it by 100%. So the percentage of people in our survey who wore contacts is 0.4 times 100%, which gives you 40%. The percentage of people who wear glasses, 0.25 times 100%, is 25%. And the percentage of people who wear neither, 0.35 times 100%, gives you 35%. Now, just like the proportions all had to add up to 1, your percentages all have to add up to 100%. What we've just done is we've created a relative frequency distribution. This is similar to the frequency distribution, only a relative frequency distribution displays proportions or percentages for each category. So before, we had the counts next to our categories for our variable. In a relative frequency distribution, you just choose to use the proportions or the percentages next to your categories rather than the actual counts. The final numerical measure that we have to describe categorical data is the mode. And the mode, very simply, is just the category with the highest frequency. So if we take a look back at our scenario, 48 people who wear contacts, 30 who wear glasses, and 42 who wear neither, we want to figure out what the mode is. Well, all we have to do is we have to look at our frequencies, and we discover the contact is going to be the mode for this example. The reason? The count is the highest for the people who wear contacts. It's higher than glasses and it's higher than the people who don't wear either glasses or contacts. Note that the mode is not the frequency 
of the category, it's the actual category itself. So 48 would be an incorrect answer for the mode. The correct answer is the actual category with the highest frequency. In this case, these are the people who wear contacts. Now we're going to get into some graphical ways of displaying categorical data. The first and really the most common is a bar graph. And so a bar graph is defined to be a graphical representation of the count of each category in a categorical variable. Each category in your variable is represented by a single bar. So as you see over here on the right, we had three categories in our variable, contacts, glasses, and neither. Each one of those categories gets its own distinct bar. You want to make sure that you're labeling the bars, so you want to make sure you're putting your category names on the horizontal axis just to be sure that if you hand this graph over to someone else, they know exactly which bar corresponds to which category. The height of each of your bars represents the frequency or the count for each category. So if you recall, we had 48 people who wore contacts. The height of that bar is between 40 and 50, but certainly much closer to 50, representing a count that's right around 48. The height of the glasses bar goes up to exactly 30, because we had exactly 30 people who say that they wear glasses. And for the people who don't wear either glasses or contacts, that count was 42. So that bar goes somewhere between 40 and 50, but certainly much closer to 40. Now, if you have a nominal variable, it doesn't really matter which order you put your columns in. So in this case, contacts, glasses, neither, the ordering of those categories doesn't matter. It's a nominal variable. So we can put the categories alphabetically, like I have here. We can order them from highest to lowest frequency. We can order them from lowest to highest frequency. If you have a nominal variable, it really doesn't matter the order you put your categories in. This is not true if you have an ordinal variable. If you have an ordinal variable, say a restaurant survey, where you ask people to rate the food as being poor, fair, good, or excellent, you would want those categories in that exact order whenever you create your bar graph. A second way of displaying categorical data is by using a pie chart. A pie chart is a graphical representation of the relative frequencies of a set of categorical data. Now, pie charts differ from bar graphs in that bar graphs use the actual counts. With pie charts, you have to use the relative frequencies. In a pie chart, you have a circle, and that circle is divided into non-overlapping slices. The key word here is non-overlapping. You can't have any observation in more than one category in order for a pie chart to make sense. In this case, people were limited to giving the answer of contacts, glasses, or neither you can't have any overlap between these three groups. Each slice of the pie represents a different category, so much in the way a bar graph had a different bar for each category, in a pie chart, each slice represents a different category. The size of the slice equals the proportion of observations in each category. Since the people who wear contacts represent the mode, they're going to have the largest slice of the pie. People who wear glasses have the smallest piece of the pie, since their relative frequency was the smallest at only 25%. And the people who don't wear either, they're somewhere in between. One vitally important feature of a pie chart is that you should always include a key. In this case, a key for a pie chart is nothing more than drawing a square with the color that you're using next to the category. We see here that contacts is being represented by blue, Neither is being represented by gray, and glasses is being represented by orange.